go. Oh, there we go. Uh, there we go. Uh, we've got a hey, hey in hands there. Yeah, Ross did gain that two law from gathering knowledge and wisdom. Baker is going to rub his hey, hey against the table for good luck. Hello and welcome back to Lucana Villain. My name is Baker and today we'll be taking a look at the top 16 deck lists for both the DLCs in Birmingham and Las Vegas. I had the pleasure of being able to cast DLC Birmingham. I'll talk a bit more about that and my own experiences and do some thank yous and some general admin at the end along with a couple of photos that I've got. I'm already super late in getting this up. It always takes me a day or two to like fully recover after a DLC weekend partly because I get home and there's a lot of stuff that I need to do to catch up for mum. Uh, but yeah, it just takes me a while to recover. More than anything, like, my adrenaline to come down, which has been something that I've, I say, suffered from. It's also a superpower. Um, basically, my entire life as a performer, I feel things in such extremes. So whenever I'm doing something, like, big and exciting, whether it's a DLC or in my past when I was doing big shows and things like that, like, after, like, I'd be on fire for as long as I needed to be on fire, and then as soon as it ended, I would just, my whole body would just sort of, there. Um, so I always have that for a couple of days and then I've had uh, other things to do, like I said, for mum. I'm also busy tomorrow at the uh, Set 5 Media Set Championships, which I'm very excited for because our, our pool of players is growing. We're going international and I'm sure you'll see a video talking more about that very soon. But yes, deck list. Now, this is kind of going to be a speed run for any deck list that is kind of the norm. We're going to kind of going to just uh, glance over it, obviously, appreciate to uh, appreciation to the players that have done well. I do plan to do um, ultra data for these events and a huge thank you to everyone that was really supportive of the ultra data that I did for set five meta leading up to the DLCs. It was one of my most liked videos in terms of view to like ratio, tons of really positive comments, both on YouTube and over on on, um, on Twitter, so I will be continuing to do that. Thank you so much for the support. That video actually also got me my first super thanks that I've ever had on the channel. Two, actually, in one video for a couple of people that left the tip, which was very appreciated. But yeah, huge thank you. We'll talk some more admin at the end, but we're going to jump into the list. A shout out to the channel sponsor, Card Market. If you're looking for, for Lorcana singles at competitive rates, please check out Card Market. But let's jump in and take a look at some deck lists. So we're going to start off with the DLC in Birmingham. There are some, miss, uh, some lists missing. There's one top eight list that's missing. It's a Ruby sapphire deck and then we have five of the top 16 deck lists so there's a couple of those missing i'm going to try and get hold of them for when i end up doing my ultra data and unfortunately we also don't have a day two conversion uh which is unfortunate and i'm going to try and make sure that that happens for the future and i'm going to try and still see if i can get the data from that uh birmingham's um day two to apply when i do my ultra data so bear with me i'm working on trying to get the rest of it but we've still got a good amount to look at we did have the day one meta game though, which was shown on stream, and I'll quickly show it now. Uh, this pretty much, this is pretty reflective of the findings of the ultra data that I released, at least in terms of uh, deck success slash popularity. With Ruby Sapphire, Amber Steel, and Ruby Amethyst in that order, very much being the big three. EA Tempo being fourth. Amber Amethyst Agro performing a bit better than was reflected in the data, and I think that is. I think a lot of those people, that is a response to the meta and thinking, okay, well, if there's going to be that many red, blue in the room, then I'm going to hopefully, if I have a kind bracket, then I could do really well with aggro and in, uh, in North America especially did really well. And then if you look at the rest, uh, Amber Emerald Under the Sea, Emerald Steel Discard, Amethyst Steel, Sapphire Steel, um, all where you'd expect to see them. Blurple, I, I thought might be a little bit higher, but overall that was pretty much what we were expecting. Obviously, in Vegas, there was a surge of Emerald Steel that performed very well in Day 2. But we'll get to that when we get to that. We're going to start off with the first place at the DLC in Birmingham. We have Federico running some Ruby Sapphire. And they're really kitted out for the mirror of the running. One Great Stone Dragon and one Fang Crossbow. Which, again, along as, as well as having the synergy that you get similarly to Ice Block. Where you can lower character strength to get into range of Medusa, Brawl, etc. And Sisu, the, the big girl herself, it 
it can also just banish a dragon. And yes, Great Stone Dragon is very good in the mirror. We're on only three Vision of the Future, which is a surprise. I do think this card is that good. Two B, uh, B prep is pretty standard. Two for how far I'll go, I really like. I was surprised at how many Ruby Sapphire lists seem to be not playing any copies of this. I think it's very good in this in this deck. Two copies of Hideaway as opposed to any copies of Kuzgo. We've got one Mufasa here. And then everything else looking pretty standard in terms of our character count. Two copies of the Daring Visitor. But yeah, first place at DLC Birmingham. Over 2,000 players. An astounding accomplishment. Congratulations to Federico. Going into top four, also on the Ruby Sapphire, we have Rice Master. A couple of differences here. They are on the four Vision and the four B Prep and the four Brawl. They're on a one Kuzgo, one Hideaway count. We are seeing two copies of Queen of Hearts, which I'm sure put in some work if this player ran into any of the Amber, Am um, Amber Amethyst aggro decks that were about. We're seeing that one copy of Dig a Little Deep, very much made famous by Din, who made uh, day two at this event. Unfortunately, did not make top 16, but yeah, they're the player that's very much put this on the map and rice master taking advantage of it as well good to see the two how far i'll go we've got two copies of vitalosphere as well in here is an additional item and it can help your maths and just giving rushes is great if they try and put down locations if you don't have hideaway or coups go or just taking out big bodies so yeah the vitalosphere is very tried and tested in ruby sapphire at this point and everything else looking pretty standard i like to see the four maleficent dragon as well i think that's going to be very useful in the mirror match which inevitably there would have been a lot so yeah huge congratulations to them. Next up in top eight, another Ruby Sapphire, but this time we have that item variant, rocking the three copies of Maurice's Workshop. And if you play an item, you can pay one to draw a card. A great draw engine if you can get it going. Although in and of itself, it's pretty slow, but since we're playing four copies of the Queen Diviner, where we are, so we have the ability to cheat it out, that can be fantastic. Obviously, we saw this put in a lot of work in Bologna. First place list being very, very similar to that. So yeah, this Queen Diviner, look at the top four, pick an item, you get it for free, uh, you add it to your hand, but if it's three cost or less, you can play it for free. We've also got two shield, one Vitalosphere, and then the standard item package to go along with that. We've got two Hideaway, no copies of Kuzco. We are running a three, three Sisu engine. Also two copies of Gaston to help with uh, opposing the Flynn Rider. Good for one-shotting Daisy Ducks. Two Brawl, two B Prep, two Medusa. Looks fantastic. Again, like if you can get this draw engine going, then this deck really is very good. The one Maleficent seems low, but you've got to find spaces for all these extra cards. You'll play like the just, just the queen and maurice's workshop is seven spaces and then the extra two like i'd say one to one of these two shield could be a vitalosphere and we wouldn't look twice um but the extra shield of virtue was on four ice block as well so we are maxed on our items as we should be we want the queen to hit but yeah you've got to find your cut somewhere but yeah fantastic looking list nice to see this workshop engine doing well so congratulations to them and our final Ruby Sapphire list in top 16, we've got Q. Uh, two coups go and one hide away, so a lot of item slash location hate. Definitely good for the mirror, and yeah, I'm glad to see all these players, that most of them are running multiple copies of these, um, this coups go hide away effect. But you always want to see at least one, especially in a tournament where you are, uh, if you're going to win, you're hoping to play day two, and in the mirror, you want them to know that you do have access to this, or in the mirror plus against Ruby Amethyst, you want them to know that you have access to this kind of uh, make them play their castles a little bit less um, carefree. But yeah, three copies of that effect here. Two for how, two how far I'll go. Only one Brawl does seem lower on four Vision, three Maleficent. We are on that one Great Stone Dragon, which would be really nice for the mirror. Yeah, I think one Brawl, one bro, one brawl probably seems low, but made it to top 16, big old field, and the rest of it looks great. So congratulations to them. All right, going back to second place, we have some EA Tempo. Just win the game, courtesy of Jonathan. And yeah, this looks very akin to the Earlmeister list with those twos and one ofs. We've got one Cogsworth, two Rafiki, three Clarabelle. That, that, that sounds very Earlmeister to me. <laughs> one Curse Merfolk, I think is fine. Uh, two Kick Cloud Kicker. We've got that Ursula package. Obviously, you're always playing the four. Two drops if you're on Emerald. But yeah, the two Sea Witch Queen can really shut down a lot of decks. We've got a 2-2 two -two Goffle line for some removal. Lull Tiberius Rock, putting a lot of work, uh, putting in a lot of work over the weekend. I like the high count of the four else uh, to have a bit more ball control. One copy of that Bell. Two, you're welcome to for a bit more spot removal. Yeah, we've seen this deck consistently doing well throughout set five format so far so you, you got to give them the credit and they, they specifically shout, um, shouted out Earl Meister as well although I think they said that they I th if I if I remember rightly they said something on the lines of 
it's not that they took this deck from them. I think they were on something similar already, but they watch almost the streams and they they wanted to shout, give them a shout out, which was which was lovely. But yeah, there you go. Can't argue with it. Second place. Huge congratulations to Jonathan. Going into top eight, some more EA Tempo just win the game. This version playing that one copy of Emerald Chromacon, uh, which can be really dis uh, a really disruptive item. We're on three Pegasus, two Shernabog, and four, four Clarabelle. Uh, standard bounce package with three Crab. We've got three copies of the Sea Witch Queen here. And so we're at 4-4 four, four on the Elsas. Uh, sorry, the Clarabelle, but also four Elsa. Three Larb. Yeah, a lot of similarities. Just a couple of uh, player preference picks. But yeah, looks good. Oh, I, I really like the Sahis as well. I'm not sure if that was in the last one. No. No, it wasn't. Yeah, I, I like the two count of Sir Hiss here for Diablo in Diablo at Cove. Um, but yeah, looks really good. Congratulations to them. And our last EA Tempo list, we've got West Coast Cam. This one looking far more um, m more akin to a version that I would probably play again. I don't mind a couple of two uh, toolbox picks, but I, I like the higher counts of most things here. We're on two copies of Bell. Um, we've got three Maleficent here as well for some extra consistency. The full four Crab, which sounds really nice. We've got the four Pegasus, four Elsa, three Ursula. Yeah, this looks like you should be uh, getting your deck going more often than not. But again, the the play the, the benefit of the more toolbox version is you potentially have those pieces for specific matchups, which are you always going to see them? No, but if you can see them enough that they matter in certain matchups, then that can make that can get you second place in a uh, in a in a DLC. So yeah, huge congratulations to them. All right, going into top four, we have Daniela with some Ruby Amethyst Control. Really nice looking list. The first couple of things that draw our eye is they are on the uh, two copies of Queen's Castle and just four copies of the library. And an observation I made during one of their games, I can't remember which round, it was it was in top cut, it was towards the finals, um, was they made, uh, they made a play very uh, fairly early on where they put down castles a couple of times in not the safest spot where it was quite expected that the opponent would be able to sufficiently answer it. But they, they, they were just using it as a way to just buy some time, buy a couple of turns, make the opponent spend, whether it's challenges slash resources, just answering these castles. It then just allowed them to just stabilize a little bit more that then by the time they they had a bit more board control, the library's coming down with that extra willpower just stuck for so long and just gained lore after lore after lore. So while I still stand by my previous statements I've made is of that, I just think Queen's Castle is so much better just because of the clock it puts on the game and I think there's less boxes you've got to tick to get the um, card drawer off um, again not all the time Library of Shonabog and Auto Magic Broom is easy as heck um, but yeah I definitely saw the benefits of having a higher library count and using these castles more as bait. So that was certainly interesting to observe. We're on just three copies of Maui, two copies of the Super Goof as well, which again, we interviewed this player and, and they made a point of saying it just helps in the early game. Um, Steel Song, anything aggro, anything emerald, for you to just like get that little bit of early lore. Hopefully you're also at least taking something out, but even if you're not, it's just a nice lore bump. Um, because again, as soon as Ruby Amethyst gets to that sort of 13, 14 lore part of the point of the game. It's real danger zone because it's only like a quest, a goat, a bounce, a quest, a castle that you can't answer. Which sounds like a lot, but it's not really. Um, so every lore counts for Ruby Amethyst. So this putting in a little bit of work, only three copies of goat is controversial. But then a top four. Also two copies of Pegasus Flying Steed, which I imagine more than anything was useful in taking out Diablos, specific, well, whether they are or are not at the Cove. But even outside of that, like just a, a, an offensive character that you can put down early or just ink it. But uh, only one Crab as well. Two Tremaine, two Medusa, and that one copy of the Floodborne Sisu. Yeah, they did really well. Um, again, a, a bit of a toolbox variant of Ruby Amethyst, which I was very much an advocator for in first chapter um and then the bounce package came along and kind of just changed everything in my opinion but can't argue with the results super interesting a huge congratulations to them going into top eight also on the ruby amethyst we have luke with a little bit of spice we're seeing two copies of the sisu daring visitor i don't want to say i told you so but i definitely told you so like that i was 
considering playing around with this and that, and that I had played around with this, I was only playing one. I was like four Emboldened Warrior, one Daring Visitor with a two count of uh, Empowered Sibling. And I ended up deciding that, that just the one Empowered Sibling was probably fine. But the one off Sisu felt really good. Um, and two copies here putting in some work for Luke, which is great to see. I also really like the three Maleficent, just max consistency in this deck. Only on the three B prep, but again, you don't want to draw that early. Um, you don't want to mulligan back into that early. You want to really reduce those odds and you want to be really be trying to like draw into it on the turn that you're going to play or, or at least create a situation where if your opponent is playing Ursa Deceiver to snipe the B prep on the right time, then that's you want to create a board situation where that's not favorable for them. Maybe you're doing something with Flynn or you've got an Emboldened Warrior Sisu that like is questing and demands an answer because you're getting too far ahead. So like the addition of Maleficent, only three Brawls, which I think is fine. Two Medusa, two Tremaine to help up that Ruby Sapphire, Sapphire Steel matchup. Uh, and the, and the, the, these are the standard one drops really for Ruby Amphist, I would say. Again, always an argument to Olaf slash Mini, um, but I think these are your standard. But yeah, super cool list. Love the Daring Visitor in this list doing well. Love the Maleficent, just again, that max consistency of finding the pieces that we need. If Ruby Amphist players, how many times you lost because you didn't find rabbit didn't find goat didn't find medusa didn't find b prep just add that consistency so yeah super like this congratulations moving on to the first of our steel song lists in top 16 we've got francis they are rocking those three lanterns very much popularized popularized by decandio good a great for just like helping to fulfill the strategy overall which is just overwhelm the field like use your singers uh, use your singers to create card advantage be able to overwhelm the field preferably put down Pete to like take away the possibility of B prep or under the sea being an out uh, and just out aggro your opponent and out resource your opponent and your lanterns just allow you to do to do this more and there's also a lot of benefit especially with the high count of Prince Naveen um, to going second with lantern especially uh, in the mirror match if they're able if you're able to establish Lantern uh, and then they have their turn three before you, they, they establish Aerial and they're all set, then you on your turn three can exert the Lantern, uh, play the Prince Naveen and Zeus the Aerial, which can really offset the tempo. And yeah, like, uh, again, I am taking this from, like, it's, the, it's a Decandio video that I'm quoting from recently, but Zach Bivens also made a point of saying something very similar to me a while back, which was putting more thought into deck building in a way where um, building for winning going second, especially in a two game format meta. So yeah, I'm super high on these lanterns. We do see those at four Naveen, three along came Zeus. Uh, we're on the two Ursula as well. Again, another singer um, and another good card on the draw. Typical song count, we're on three bear. Those two Cinderella start hearted, one world's greatest criminal mind. Again, I, I, I'm on two of these in my steel song list, which is very similar to this, although I'm not on the Tinkerbell, but maybe she needs to come back. But yeah, world's greatest criminal mind, a lot of targets at the moment. And then yeah, as I said, those three Pete, which can really secure the game. So yeah, super good looking list. Two Piglet Poo Pirate Captain as well. Congratulations to Francis. And our other Steel Song list in a top 16. A very clean looking list here. And I, we had this person on stream and um, from what I hear, they are a Magic the Gathering Hall of Famer, if my information is correct. But yes, anything on two lines always looks nice. No lanterns, but we're still on the four Zeus and four Naveen, four Pete. We've got three Lawrence here as another really nice early game threat. The three bear, three copies of the Cinderella Stout Hearted, three Piglet. Yeah, looks super good. Not really much more to say congratulations to them and the last deck list i have at current for the top 16 from dlc birmingham we do have some amber emerald under the sea so uh three copies of that under the sea we are seeing those four muses no copies of painting the roses red which is rare most uh most of these decks do run run that the three copies of Keda, even that seems low when you're not on painting the roses red but we're very heavy on the discard we're on four prince john four sudden chill four you have forgotten me uh and then of course bare necessities and ursula are uh, our discards. We had to talk about Bruno is discard slash spot removal. We've got that Diablo engine. Three copies of Cricky to have really aggressive challenging turns out of nowhere. And the oh so important two copies of Hidden Cove to keep things like Diablo um, out of range of a lot of things that can take him out. So yeah, no surprise for me to see this deck do well. Uh, I think I'm maybe a little bit underrepresented, but none, uh, underrepresented, underrepresented. There we go. But nonetheless, congratulations to them.
Also, of course, a shout out to Alphos who made top 32. I was so, so happy for him. I think he really deserved it. And I'm glad he, uh, we were able to feature him. He ended up being one place shy of earning his invite to European uh, Championships through pass downs. He was one shy, which I know he was heartbroken about. And I also know he came onto this deck uh, quite late in the day. But yeah, pretty, uh, pretty similar to the last Amber Emerald under the sea deck we looked at. Looks good. Congratulations to Alphos. And finally, a shout out to Din on another day two at a DLC. Uh, another great looking list. And yeah, a couple of surprises here. No Maui's whatsoever. Not a single one. We're also, on, we're also on four Develop Your Brain and four copies of Vision of the Future and four copies of How Far I'll Go. We still got that one dig a little deeper. The 4B prep. And I like this concept of just I'm clearing the board on five. That, that's just it. Like I've, I've got all like four one jumper on as well uh, and the four Tipo, four Quill. So I'm going to be uh, enough ink on turn five that I'm playing Scar B prep, resetting the board. Um, I've got max consistency to find them. And yeah, again, and made day two of it. 62 cards though, mm, but a better player than me. Congratulations to them. All right, moving over to the DLC in Las Vegas. Now, they did have a day one and day two meta report. Shout out to, I got this courtesy of the Illumiteers. They shared a photo that had been been written on a notepad, and I've just converted uh, converted converted it to this. It's been a week, my guys. It's been a week, my villains. But yeah, uh, the meta breakdown, very similar to what we saw in the UK, but a huge rise in Emerald Steel with 180 people piloting it and a fantastic conversion rate of eight players making it to day two and then three of those eight making it all the way to the top four and going on to win the entire thing um there is blurple missing off lit up missing off this uh tally which was also not on the notepad that the illumiteers share but i had a look at the top 64 and in index and i noticed there was one blurple again bit of a shame i think it underperformed but nonetheless let's take a look at the first day uh first place deck list we have have Zan Zayed, no stranger to anyone that follows Lorcana competitively. Uh, at this point, really cementing himself as just, if not, if not the best, definitely one of the very best Lorcana players currently in the game. And they brought along some Emerald Steel, which seems to have been a bit of a um, worst or best kept the worst or the best kept secret depending on who you are what where you're from and what play test groups you're in i hear things uh but yeah this deck seemingly pretty good um emerald steel discard of course we've got four copies of that ursa deceiver of all who can double sing songs like storm strength and raging fire we've got that max prince john package to complement four sudden chill for Hypnotize, and of course Bruno and Ursula as discard in and of themselves. We've got Pete to shut down those actions. We've got two copies of Arna. We've got that Diablo line. Two copies of the Hidden Cove. And yeah, the, the like I, I, I watched the entire stream. I watched both streams. Um, I really enjoyed them. Really, really. I'll, I'll talk more about that stuff at the end. Um, but yeah, you really saw the, the power of this just, hey, if I can if I can shift Diablo on, on three... Um, and then immediately pay, play Pete. That's kind of game breaking. Um, and if I, if you don't get that, then maybe you just get the Prince John, and then you sing singing sudden chill with your two drop, and then yeah, the power of discard and the full copies of morph as well, giving access to the early beast or the early tink, like the early beast in particular. Like, how do you answer that unless you are running steel stuff like Baboom or you've got teeth and ambitions? And again, that's not removing it; that's just offsetting the draw. But still, loss in tempo. Um, but most of the time, you're not you're not going to be able to touch this beast that early for after a shift on three so yeah this this is the deck that it seems some top players were discussing and like trying to keep relatively on the down low and yeah we saw the power of it going all the way to first place so yeah a humongous congratulations to zan on another just incredible achievement in second place, we also have Emerald Steel. Everything I just said, this player is on the four count of Arna. Four count of everything here, but by and large, doing the exact same thing. The only big difference is the lack of muses, which again, if you watched the uh, the stream or specifically like the last, the, the, like the top 
eight to top four. Um, then you saw the power of having Prince John and the Muses on the floor. Uh, on the floor? <laughs> they hit the floor! On the board! Uh, and just knowing how the interactions work with the bag and doing things like bouncing their Diablo before you take the draw off of your Prince John and things like that. So yeah, like the lack of Muses, so like I, I think the Muses definitely makes the mirror match a lot better. Uh, but yeah, these Arna as well, probably one of the uh, MVPs of the weekend. I imagine they've gone up in price. But yeah, huge congratulations to Chris. And also in top four, we have another Emerald Steel list. This is, I think, identical to Zan's that we looked uh, just looked at, uh, TB4. So yeah, expect Emerald Steel to be popping up everywhere, especially early set championships. But huge congratulations to them. In top 16, also on the Emerald Steel, we have Ian. Again, max counts of pretty much everything, except we're on two Hypnotize and two copies of Baboom. Um, interrupt the opposing Diablo if they haven't managed to get to the Cove. Flynn Rider, there's always been a lot of uses for Baboom. And also four copies of Captain Hook for a little bit more early board control. Once again, leaning on that Max Prince John package uh, and the full Diablo shift line and hoping to play that early with one of our four copies of Peep. So yeah, fantastic. Congratulations to Ian. Going back to top four, we have Christian with some Ruby Amethyst. They're on 61 cards. Uh, they're on the four copies of Elsa, along with just one copy of Brawl, which I quite like. Again, I, try, I cut Brawls completely for a while, and it didn't feel the worst. Um, and I, I, I prefer now being back at a count. I'm on three Brawl and two Elsa at the moment, which feels quite good so five of those kind of effects because like Elsa and Brawl can fill similar roles uh, but yeah leaning more into the Elsa here we've got one Tremaine and two copies of B-Kings uh, hopefully give us a better Ruby Sapphire matchup and four crabs and really nicely two copies of Kuzgo no teeth and ambitions here but obviously the four crabs synergizing really nicely with Kuzgo and yeah I've always been a big fan of Kuzgo and um, more situations turn to where you can go wide and just always a safe character to put on the board, knowing that you're going to be drawing a card back. So yeah, super good looking list. Congratulations to Christian. That was the only Ruby Amethyst list in top 16. Pfft, underperforming. Uh, but going to top 8, we have Kevin also on that Amber Emerald Under the Sea. But... Again, quite a toolbox variant. We've got one copy of Prince Naveen, who not only can jump in and immediately sing, be our guest, Paint and Roses Red, Sudden Chill, You're Welcome, or Bruno, where I imagine feels quite nice, but he is also just a singer six, so he's contributing six of the eight that we need for Under the Sea. So then all it takes is one of these Ursula, one of these Sir Hiss, and we've also got two copies of Mother Gothel here. But yeah, still got still got that Under the Sea engine with three copies of Muses. We're on the 4-4 Diablo line. Big discard package with four john four chill three you have forgotten me um we are playing the three paint of the roses red here and the four kida just one copy of hidden cove seems low to me i, I just think for the mirror for steel song against uh red decks we're expecting brawls i just think this hidden cove is super important but nonetheless a fantastic looking list and a great achievement making top eight so congratulations to kevin Going to top 16, we have some more Emerald Amber, but this be Lemon and Lime Aggro. I don't call Emerald Amber under that. I think of Lemon and Lime as aggro because I, I don't know, it's like, the, it's sour and that's how you feel when you're facing aggro. Am I not right? So I always think Lemon and Lime is specifically aggro version of Amber Emerald. But yeah, you saw it make a fantastic run. I, I watched at least one game uh, from this player. Uh, but yeah, super, super fast. We've got that Clarabel engine, a 2-4. Um, no, a 2-4-4. Four, four, so big Clarabel engine. Our aggro pieces are Daisy, Lilo, one Murpho. We've got four Pegasus, four Piglet, one Simba for a bodyguard, one Baloo for a bodyguard, the four Donald to add lore, four Ursa to snipe songs. We've got four Rapunzel's for card draw, two Sven as well. Again, a really aggressive request for two. Three, three is respectable and keeping one of our aggro characters safe. Also, two Tinkerbell, just help us not run off cards, help us find pieces. Uh, three, uh, a four, three Queen line as well to have a bit more control over the board and turn our teeny tiny characters into uh big formidable bosses we got 
three Pegasus to shift onto the four um, one drop, and two Shernabog. Madness. And yeah, like, well done you, Kara. Maybe people will start respecting aggro a bit more, because I don't think many people were. A couple of people were, like we saw one Ruby Sapphire list with a couple of Queen of Hearts. Uh, but yeah, you show them, Clara. Huge congratulations. Going back to top eight, we've got some more Ruby Sapphire. This is a 62 card variant. Only three Vision of the Future again, which I, I, I just think that card is that good. Too far, too how far I'll go, I like. Uh, only three copies of Fishbone Quill, which I actually heard Moyen talk about on the recent Podkana podcast. And he, he kind of sold me on it, you know. You should, uh, you should, you should go and watch um, the latest episode. Um, but yeah, he, he's kind of sold me on that three. Like, it's an important piece, but as long as you find it early like you you never need more than two let's put it that way and if you are just trying to find space for something then it's not the worst thing in the world two vitalisphere on those three gaston to help against flins help one shotting daisies and just forwards a big and big number to hit really love the one scar i bet this put in a lot of what well, I'm, I'm i'm yo I, I, let me cook for a minute i've made so many correct takes this set <laughs> so many. i think i did it uh set three and four as well just 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 saying but yeah i'm glad to see some of these predictions that i've made becoming true validation uh three copies of maui makes sense when you're on one scar two hideaway no coups go yeah super nice looking congratulations to jonathan Going into top 16, we've got Santiago uh, on a list that looks very similar to the one that we looked at from Birmingham with those two copies of Queen of Hearts. So a little bit of respect for aggro. Just one copy of the Daring Visitor and three of the Big Sisu, which I think is fine. Like, it's, small Sisu isn't always needed. Uh, for how far I'll go, so really, like, that's going to help with your search. It's going to help with your ramp. We're on two hideaway. Two be prepared. Looks super. And four Manny Dragon for the mirror. Super good looking. Congratulations. No fishbone quill whoa okay okay <laughs> wait a minute <laughs> i was like yep yep this looks normal whoa there's no fishbone quill in here okay okay i mean fair we i mean we're just we're just saying we're we, we are either going tipo or we're going one jump or yes tipo then one jump um yeah all right top 16 with it for how far i'll go makes a lot more sense now um, yeah, interesting. I need to, I need to dwell on that. I need to, I need to, I need to let that simmer. But none, nonetheless, congratulations to Santiago. Also in top 16 on Ruby Sapphire, we have Daniel Holt, who I believe is a game designer for Magic the Gathering or Wizard the, Wizard something that Wizards of the Coast do. Um, but nonetheless, managed to catch uh, at least one of their stream games. But yeah, I remember them in particular more than anything, just because I, I caught the interview that they did they, uh, as well. Uh, and they were full of Disney magic, which I always like to see. So, shout out to, to you, Daniel. One copy of Be Prepared, though, son, is, is optimism levels that I have not had enough coffee to accept. Uh, but, yo, you made top 16 with it, so who am I to talk? Love that you're on 4 Vision, though. One copy of Ruby Chromacon, I really like. It's an additional item. Um, again, Maui's are now one-shotting one castles and plenty of other interactions. Their math now changes. Uh, even Queen of Hearts, like, hitting three on uh, turn two, if you put down the Chromacon on one, is pretty cool. Standard item package. Everything else, pretty standard. Uh, no hideaway. We're opting for the two Kuzco, but looks super good, so congratulations. Congratulations to them. And our last Ruby Sapphire list from the top 16 of DLC Vegas. We have Justin Ward. They're on that one Great Stone Dragon. Super good for the mirror. Two Hellfire. Two B Prep. We're on one Kuzgo and two Hideaway. So that high account of item hate. Also on one copy of King Candy. Who, when you play him, it doesn't need to be shifted. Draw two cards and then put one card from your hand at the bottom of your deck. Which, again, combo deck. Quite a lot of situations where you're going to be quite happy to put that Maleficent down the bottom of your deck or whatever it might be. And again, it's a bit more dig. It's a nice top deck if you ended up if you um if you if you've had your hand discarded. Also on the on that one Ruby Chromacon and just three Fishbone Quill again. So that being quite a popular theme among the top Ruby Sapphire players. So something to take into account for sure. Huge congratulations to Justin. Going back to top eight, we have our first EA Tembo just win the game list. Sixty-two cards. Yo, this was a. 
This was a popular event for um, over over 60 cards. Um, but yeah, a slightly toolbox variant. The thing that jumps out at me straight away more than anything are the two copies of Bibbidi Bobbidi Boo! Three cost, uninkable song. Return chosen character of yours to your hand to play a character of the same cost or less for free. So doubling up on your goat, your rabbit, your Elsa effect, your Ursula, um, and probably uh, your Kit Cloud Kicker, your Crab as well. Crab Kick, you get things to insane numbers by double bouncing crab uh, i think lulz haverus rourke would have been one of the best uh recipients of this particular ability and makes sense to have a wide three drop like package in that sense four fox three crab one of the three drop clarabelle two kit two urson cerebral and the three lyle so yeah it makes a lot of sense we've got three merfolk two bonsai for the aggro two sir hiss for the diablos when they be chilling at the cove two copies of you're welcome yeah it looks super good i'd probably like to see a um at least one we don't talk about bruno in here but looks super good made top eight huge congratulations to them and in top 16 we have bryant's on the ea tempo we are seeing that one copy of, of emerald chromicon one copy of the library as well and just one copy of arna one kick cloud kicker and then our one drops are two sherna two begasis and four Clarabelle. We've got that one Cricky as well for a nice surprise challenging turn. Looks good. Congratulations to them. Also in top 16, we have Den with a very, very similar looking list to the one we just looked at. Yeah, EA Tempo performing incredibly well, particularly over in Vegas. Just that one-off library. Um, less less one-offs. I don't think other than the library, no one-offs. But yeah, a super good looking list. Congratulations to them. And our last EA Tempo list, courtesy of Scott. Uh, this looks, again, very akin to the Earl Meister list. We've got two cobs two cogs worth, two Olaf, three copies of Queen's Castle. I like though high count of that. Uh, two copies of the three drop of Mother Gothel with that built-in Mother Knows best ability. One Arna, one Kit Cloud Kicker. Yeah, just again, this toolbox variant, which has been performing very well, a lot better than I imagined it would, to be honest. So yeah, put my hands up. Seems like a great deck. Congratulations to Scott. And our final list for the top 16, we have Jonathan Lamb. No stranger, again, to anyone that follows Lorcana competitively. They've made top cut. I, I need to double check how many times, but I've seen them on stream a few times now. Uh, and they are repping that Sapphire Steel, which has been performing so poorly over this season i'm sorry there's, there's no other way to put it but jonathan lamb repping the sapphire steel stands with a top eight finish and incredible we were actually uh in the evening me speci like a whole group of us in the hotel were playing games and speci had his laptop in the corner and had this stream up um and when i noticed this merlin cottage was in play i halted i i was like whoa everyone stop what you're doing <laughs> there's a merlin cottage in play and everyone for a moment was like, "What?" Uh, so yeah, absolutely loved it. G glad to see it get, get it. Glad to see that it actually got featured on stream as well. Uh, yeah, super cool. We got one copy of Tebow here as an additional ramp tool from set five. One baboon, one vision of the future, one fire the cannons, uh, three let it go for our removal, and then yeah, the three Tamatoa, the four Tink, the three aerial. So super heavy on the aerial. Um, the four Cogsworth, the three Mickey, three Pete, also an addition from set five. We've got three Argus as well, again, to help with the Flynn Rider, which can be so good into the into Sapphire Steel. Uh, and just, again, helps with daisies, helps with locations. Yeah, I think J Jonathan Lamb is probably just in another... It's another tier completely when it comes to piloting Sapphire Steel. Um, but yeah, maybe this will inspire some Sapphire Steel stands that are maybe losing faith in their baby that... The, the, there's life in it yet. Huge congratulations to Jonathan. And then once again, just a couple of shout outs to people that made top two, uh, top day two. Uh, first of all, Dale, who's not a player that was, well, for, hugely familiar to me until recently. Um, although we have covered them before because this is their fourth day two. Um, so we might have covered them in the past before, but it was brought to my attention that they, they were one of the first people on this Emerald Steel list. They played a variant very similar to this in Toronto, just obviously um, it's now been updated for set five with just four Pete and two Arna. But yeah, it was brought to my attention that Dale's been on, uh, on, on this Emerald Steel spice for a while and fourth time making top cut is a great accomplishment. Uh, probably a little bit better in the mirror match 
so they're not as all in on the Prince John engine. You see only one hypnotize here. One copy of Smash as well for some more removal. But yeah, a shout out to Dale. Also, a shout out to Bummy Jr., who's someone that I've tested with in the past. Running 61 cards, Steel Song, Steel Song Aggro. Super like this. Our song package is literally four wheel, four strength, four storm for just, again, wheel for replenishment, st uh, strength to um, control the board a little bit, and storm for kind of board control, but also just a bit a bit more card draw when we can't wheel. We've got three Naveen to sing those songs out of nowhere, and they're just a full aggro package. Four Boring Sensation Cinderella, obviously, to sing these songs, and a 4-4 Robin Hood line, but we've got four Piglet, four Daisy, we've got two Kida to be a bodyguard, and two copies of the Floodborne, who can fill the purpose that Kida used to fill before Under the Sea came along, which was just a, I put this down, I basically get a, a free questing turn, by you playing Maui or anything with Rush during your turn, um, anything on your board isn't going to be able to challenge my board, so it just created a free questing turn, and filling that role here, and great that the the, the shift target has a purpose as a as, as a bodyguard, two Benja for the items, four Big Bad Lawrence as well. Four Pete to shut down those actions, those B preps, those Zeus's, the, uh, those under the seas. And yeah, making top 32 of it, which I think is super spicy. So congratulations to Bummy. Also a shout out to Bannable Harker, fellow content creator. Um, they've agreed to come to the channel at some point uh, for a podcast. So I look forward to that uh, eventually. I don't know when, but it will happen, I'm sure. But yeah, a huge shout out to them. You see also on this one copy of Scar, three Fishbone and one great stone dragon which seems to be quite common among the ruby sapphire players that did well or at least a few of them the two for two how far i'll go just three visions again i think this is that good that i would always want four but i think it's fine one vitalisphere two b prep uh, and two coups go as opposed to the hideaway so yeah a shout out to banable and of course couldn't go on without a shout out to Zach Bivens, the first ever player to be top seed at two separate Disney Little Kind of challenges. And I'm just going to say this, um, and I'm not taking anything away from their tix top 64 opponent as well. Obviously, did a fantastic job to get that far um, and clearly a very good player. But if you watch this guy, uh, th this is one of the first games I watched because I watched day two before day one. Um, and I watched this, 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 these two games. And Zach just was not allowed to play. Uh, like, he just wasn't like you. Just, like I'm just just go and watch those games if you haven't already. It was absolutely heartbreaking. Just two unplayable hands in a row. Um, but nonetheless, a fantastic accomplishment. Another day two, and yeah, first player to make um, uh, to be first seed twice. And yeah, on a lot of that discard package, three Prince John, we've got the two Friar Tucks, Bessie will be proud. Those four Hidden Cove, really emphasizing the importance of this Hidden Cove, protecting your Diablo, protecting your John, um, and keeping things like Beast out of Medusa range, and just like helps your whole board against Ruby Sapphire, against Big Sisu. Um, we've got four Cop Captain Hook for, for the early board control, that Diablo package, followed by Pete, that a lot of players seem to be, well, not a lot, but a lot of the best performing players seem to be onto this uh, to lucifer as well cunning cat as some out of nowhere discard so yeah huge congratulations to zach and the final list we're going to take a look at we're going to have to wrap up soon because it's been super long but how can i not take a look at this top 64 ruby steel list I, I love it. I've been waiting for someone to put this Gustav the Giant to use. He enters uh, play exerted and doesn't ready at the start of the turn. You re-ready him when one of your other characters banishes someone in a challenge. So you want to have down a character that could, like a Sisu or a Smee and have them exert because they quested or they challenged something else or they sang. And then you put down the Gustav, it comes in exerted, challenge, ready him. And him getting your Flynn Rider online just sounds absolutely insane. We've got four Goofy for that Lord Giant out of nowhere running four copies of happy as a knight to as evasive four doc with that um discard your hand and draw, and draw two and four copies of the seven dwarves mine um during your turn the first time you move a character there you can do one damage to an opposed to a chosen character but if it's a knight then you can do two damage instead. So that's what these um, this doc and this happy is going to are, are going to be doing. And when I saw this list, I I, I turned to the game um, developer Tim, and I was like, "Are we are we sleeping on Seven Dwarfs Mine?" And he was like, "More than you know." So 
something to take a look at. We've got three gym to rush it in and four RLS Legacy as well. Um, mate, I love the look of this deck. Three John Silver as well with the synergy with the locations. Resist one and extra law for each location in play. And three Tiana, again, especially when we're playing Doc and emptying our hand easily. Um, and we can shut down actions by exerting her. And we've got four Pete to shut down actions as well. Two Benja for the item removal. Yeah, I absolutely love this. I am itching to give this a try. Huge congratulations to them. And that's it for the top 16 deck list for both Vegas and Birmingham. Again, a huge congratulations to everybody that attended. And yeah, my plan is to, I'm going to try and get the rest, a bit more of the information from Birmingham. Uh, and I'm going to provide, I'm going to do ultra data for all of it. And yeah, like I'll keep ultra data over the next few weeks and going into set championships because I, uh, as it has been shown that that is something that appeals to people. But yeah, a little bit of admin, I'll not spend too long because again super long video but yeah the again casting was an absolute pleasure it was amazing um again i've said this before i'm super self-critical one of the first things i do when i get home is re-watch the stream um to, to evaluate myself and while i still think like there's always there's obviously always room for growth and room to learn and room and like room to get better um and there's still a couple of moments where i cringed up myself but overall, I think this was probably my best casting performance yet. Uh, and again, I am super critical of myself. And there are things I did wrong that I noticed and again, cringed at myself. But overall, I was super proud of how the event ran. It was great to have Ed there as well as an addition to the casting team. But yeah, I've always felt confident that I could do the job and bring something to it. But I always knew there was going to be a learning curve with this specific type of entertainment media. Obviously, I've done a lot of theatre and I have done bits of TV, but obviously this is a bit more of a specific thing. And then, of course, you need to be as familiar as you can be with Lorcana. And I hope I've shown that I will always put my full effort into being as researched as I possibly can and just try and improve on any mistakes I do make. But yeah, mentally, this was a real turning point for me. And yeah, I was really happy with how it went. But yeah, the stream was just so much fun. Uh, playing Pack Rush was great. And like the vibes were just immaculate and the production team. Uh, and I was booed for not singing Be Prepared in, I, don't know, I, think it, I think it was the final. And I hope it comes across people that, I, I, and I sent out a tweet about this, where I'm paraphrasing, but I said something along the lines of, I want to be clear that, as much as I think it's good for some casters to like have character and have fun bits that they do, the, the main focus should always be the players and the game. And I hope I make it clear that I do consider that my focus and I pick my moments to kind of add the more, uh, the, the Disney magic sort of stuff and add character and things like that. Um, and it was for that reason that I was like, okay, I've sung Be Prepared a couple of times. This, this is a big, this is a big moment in this game. I'm not gonna do it. And the live crowd booed me. <laughs> And the production team are booing me. But nonetheless, I hope it comes across as clear that, like, I'm not trying to make it all about me. Yes, I'm trying to shine a little bit. I recently recently watched the Goofy movie again for the first time in ages, which is just a fantastic, a fantastic film. And I was listening to the song, Stand Out Above the Crowd Even if I gotta shout out loud To mine is the only face you'll see Gonna stand out do you notice me? And yeah, that, that's kind of the MO. <laughs> but nonetheless, my full respect to every player. It's a pleasure to get to go. And yeah, it was awesome, awesome to get to meet so many people. I'm so sorry that I'm bad with names. And sometimes I like I meet people and I've met them before. And it takes me a minute to place people. So I'm sorry if I ever forget that like I've met you before. Or it takes me a minute or I forget a name. I don't ever want anyone to not feel appreciated. But it was awesome to get to talk to so many people about lots of things. Um, people were like, uh, the one person told me, oh, I remember finding you from your video about 10 decks to run the Queen Peddler and I've been with you ever since. And there were a couple of couples who were telling me that they watched with their kids and one person, uh, one couple in particular telling me when my intro starts with the music and the smoke and the mask on my face, they scream monster and run away. They assured me it was like in a playful, endearing way. <laughs> But yeah, hearing things like that is just like super endearing. It makes me super proud. Um, and it was great to get to take photos with people and sign cards. Two people wanted me to sign Enchanted. I signed one Rattigan's Party uh, and one of the new Scar by Chase Card from Shivery, from Shivery Skies. Both times I must have said like seven, eight times. Are you sure? Are you sure you want me to do this? But yeah, al always just, just an absolute honor and a huge thank you to everybody.
And a particular shout out to the person who gave me this 3D Rattigan. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it. Oh, no, that might not be bad, to be fair. You might you might be able to make it. Yeah, you can make it out a little bit. Uh, yeah, it came up to me and they were like, oh, I make th uh, 3D cards and this is for you. And this is the first present I've ever been given at a Locarno event. And I absolutely adore it. It's up on my shelf along with like my enchanted cards and stuff like that. So shout out to you. And last shout out to, there was a gentleman that came up to me, who again, I'm sorry, name escapes me. But he wanted to talk to me about someone he had met. He wanted to shout out someone. And I'm going to end off on this. He was telling me about a lovely, lovely lady called Natalie Wood from Scotland who was going around all day giving cookies to her opponents was super new at the game and just come to have fun giving cookies to everyone she played and apparently was just embodying like the most positive vibes that ever did was so shout out to you Natalie Wood and your cookies but that's gonna be it from me for now thank you so much for watching if you're brand new to the channel please subscribe for all things Lorcana hit that like button to show support and we'll see you soon